got into IT kind of by accident. Um, initially in the mid 80s, I got into technology uh, as a teenager, um, really as a method of, of annoying my brother, um, but also to, uh, to escape the kind of a humdrum notion that I was, I, I went to a girls school and I was doing home economics and needlework and, and I just wasn't interested in it and my brother got to play video games and you know make the computer speak to him which seemed like a much more exciting thing to be doing so initially my interest was sparked then and luckily we had a computer at home a BBC micro so I learned myself I taught myself you know how to do basic coding then when I was in my 20s I was building my own computers um, and went into a career in selling CD manufacturing to games companies I didn't have any qualifications. I didn't think I had any options. Um, and then one of my um, customers actually dared me to phone up an advert. Uh, Yorkshire Television were looking for a young and funky female presenter for a video games program. And he was always teasing me that I was genuinely into games, which still at that time, in the, in the mid-90s, was kind of unusual for a girl. Um, so I applied for the job and uh, I got it and I ended up presenting this program on Nickelodeon. And I was like, hmm kind of enjoyed that so um, I decided to see if I could do the one thing I'd always wanted to do which was journalism but again no qualifications so I wrote some reviews for games that I liked and sent them around to magazines with a cover note saying saying I'm on television give us a job um, and one of them did EMAP images came back and offered me a reviews editor role on a new PC magazine that they were bringing out um, and that was it, 20 years on, I am still freelancing in the computer, now moved into sort of the internet and technology generally and I would get involved in quite a lot of policy discussions for internet governance forum. Um, but um, yeah, my heart still lies with the gaming which is really what, what led me into technology in the first place. I quite often get asked whether I've experienced any sexism or, you know, sort of discrimination because of being a woman working in IT, because it is a very predominantly male industry. I've never really felt discriminated against, but I have always been made to feel a little bit different. You know, you meet someone at a party and they say, what job do you do? I'm an IT journalist, a tech journalist. And they're kind of head cocks to the side quizzically and they go, really? Um, I don't mind feeling different, but I can imagine how a lot of women perhaps don't want to be made to feel different because of the choices they've made. And that for me really has been one of the biggest obstacles I've tried to overcome, in, you know, especially because I teach um, you know, and I speak to schoolgirls about GCSE choices, trying to let them know what their options are working uh, with technology and computers. And I'd really like to try and overcome that curious feeling of, oh, you're a woman who's into IT. because. Actually, it shouldn't be unusual. And the fact that it is unusual, although it's never caused me a problem, it causes the industry in general a problem. Um, so I'd like to try and eliminate that. Um, you know, also when I used to work on games magazines, and there's, you know, there is a lot of macho bravado, especially in the games industry. Um, you know, and, and it would be nice to be able to overcome that too and, and have more mentors for boys to see you know, uh, how beneficial it can be to have women working with them in the workplace so that you don't get that kind of friction of, oh, there's a, oh, there's a girl. You know, it, it shouldn't be like that. They should be saying, oh, great, there's a girl. You know, we can m m hook into her creativity and her communication skills and beep our horns in celebration <laughs> of how great she is. There, just like that. More women should think about going into IT, first of all because there are tremendous opportunities at the moment, particularly in the UK. Um, you know, there is a, a measured and you know, definite IT skills gap. UK companies are having to look outside, you know, men and women um, should look at it for this reason. The companies are having to look outside the UK to fill roles within their IT departments because there aren't the skilled workers applying for the jobs from the UK. So first of all, in an economy where it's tough to get a job, IT is a really good bet at the moment. Secondly, I think a lot of women perceptually don't realise how ungeeky the potential is. You know, there's this very much this perception of, oh, it's a very geeky, you know, got to be a professor with a white coat and glasses and a goatee beard and, you know, go around doing sums on windows. And it just doesn't have to be like that. There are some really great, vibrant and 
modern careers in technology, pretty much everything we touch in life is powered by, designed by, um, you know, guided by technology. So um, the, there are so many different career paths that are open to you, but you need that grounding. In fact, I really think that it should be, you know, one of the, the, the reading, writing and arithmetic. It should be, computers should be added on because it is now the natural language of the next generation. Plus, of course, it's a language without barriers. You learn to code, you can code anywhere in the world, and you don't have to learn any new languages. It's the same language in um, Beijing as it is in Toronto, as it is in Birmingham. So you learn that one skill, and it translates to wherever you want to live in the world and work in the world. I think there's a perception problem with technology. You know, I certainly, when I was at school in the mid 80s, it was not expected for girls to be into technology. We got to study home economics and needlework. Um, my brother was learning computer studies and, and technical drawing. So now we get to a position where people of my age, in my mid 40s, um, who are in managerial and C suite positions, you know, in, in industry, there aren't so many women in the technical field because we had to take it upon ourselves to learn about technology back then. This is changing now, right? Because girls have the opportunity now to learn about technology. And I think in 20 years, we, that a lot of those problems will be eliminated. There will be a lot of women working at that level in technical careers. Um, and so there aren't, but at the moment, it's tough for the younger girls to see the role models and to find people that they can model themselves on. So it's really important that those of us who were able to train and teach ourselves against the odds, that we make ourselves available to be role models. You know, it's kind of difficult thinking of yourself as a role model, especially if, like me, you taught yourself. I had huge esteem issues about, you know, gosh, I left school without any qualifications. Can I really be standing up in front of a class full of girls at age 15, 16 and calling myself a role model? Um, well, yeah, actually, do you know what? I can, because I didn't have the opportunities that they're given. Um, but if I can help them to make the right choices and actually get a formal education in the stuff that I had to teach myself, they can do a hundred times better than I've done. So uh, I kind of now I'm, I think women need to stand, women in my position need to have the courage to stand up and say, do you know what, I am a role model and I'm happy to be a role model and, and if I can give a little bit back to um, society and you know, the school that I went to, you know, go into that school, offer up your services as a mentor or a role model to go and speak to girls about the options and about what you do. I, guarantee you, your school will bite your hand off. And it's so rewarding. Um, if you're thinking about a career in IT, there are obviously lots of different levels from which you start. If you're in school, um, you know, then definitely look at the new computing curriculum uh, for GCSE, which is very, very different from the IT qualifications that we've been looking at in the past. You know, it's, it's no longer a question of learning how to do a spreadsheet and using a bit of Photoshop. It's now proper basic computing skills, which will be really valuable to you whatever career path you choose to do. So hook into the education that's available to you. After schools, clubs are a great way as well to, to learn about technology. Um, take on an internship. There are lots of internships and you know back to work schemes um, which allow you to learn in a non sort of threatening way. Actually, as you work, learn about technology and how it is today. If you're a mother return, thinking about returning to work. You've perhaps you know sort of raised your family, and your family are now going back, you know, going to senior school. Um, if one of your children is taking technology and deciding to go for GCSE computer studies or whatever, learn alongside them. What a brilliant opportunity to take a few baby steps, learning about the opportunity and the technology that's available to you to study alongside your child, you'll gain rapport with your child, you get to spend quality time with them and understand more and feel less threatened by the internet and technology in the way it's infiltrating our lives. And of course, take advantage of all of the, the brilliant training courses that there are available to you, you know, through local government and through the BCS. And there are lots of different ways that you can um, study and take on information technology skills, computing skills, and see how far you want to go with them.